Hey, Anthony Pietrovoni here, back with another Tesla video. This time we're talking about Tesla's Q3 earnings, their massive beat, and we're gonna see that right now the stock is up 3.2%, sitting at 436 in the after hours, and in this video, I'm gonna give a breakdown of the quarter, and give you my updated price target for Tesla in the near term and the long term. If you're looking to build your wealth through stock market investing, then consider subscribing. I share videos on stock market investing and achieving financial freedom. I also share my portfolio update so you can see all the moves I'm personally making as the days and the month, months go by. First thing, Wall Street was expecting revenue of 8.2 billion for the quarter and a gain of 55 cents per share. And Tesla destroyed expectations with 8.7 billion in revenue with a gain of 76 cents per share, but this is non-GAAP. And the reason why this is non-GAAP is because there was the stocks that were given to Elon Musk as part of the pay compensation. And we'll see that he was given about $290 worth of stock. And that got inputted into the quarter results, which skewed the profitability. For profitability, we see there was $809 million in GAAP operating income with a 9.2% operating margin in Q3 and the 331 million GAAP net income. And this is typically what things like the S&P would look at though. They would look more at the GAAP net income, not the non-GAAP. So we could see a delay in the S&P inclusion for another quarter where there is a clear massive gap net income because I'm going to show you how many regulatory credits they took. So we see that the SPC expense increased to $543 million, which was driven by the 2018 CEO award milestones that were given to Elon Musk. We see that there was a $5.9 billion increase in cash and cash equivalents in Q3, bringing their cash to $14.5 billion. They had operating cash flow, less capex, a uh, basis free cash flow of 1.4 billion in Q3. These are all records right now. First step of FSD beta rollout that started was just released last night, which is full self-driving, and that's been released, and it's gonna be slowly released as we go on through times. We scroll down, we take a look at the revenues here. 7.6 billion from automotive. Look at the last quarter, 5.1 billion, 5.1, 6.3, 5.3 in the previous quarters. Massive new record. Quarter over quarter, 47% growth. Year over year, 42% growth. Remember, Elon Musk said they will see 40 to 50% growth each year, this, uh, unless there is some crazy crisis or World War III. If that happens, then they're expecting 30 to 40% growth year over year. So we can assume we're gonna continue to see Tesla grow at around 40% per year where their internal target is 50% or greater per year. Automotive's gross profit, 2.1 billion. Automotive gross margin, 27.7%. Now this is what the analysts were looking at. We looked at going into the call, analysts were looking at what is the margin, profit margin they wanna see, and they wanna see how much revenue is coming from the regulatory credits. So this is what we see right here. 27.7% is the gross margin for profit, however, $397 million was from regulatory credits. These are the ZEV credits that they get from the auto, other auto manufacturers that aren't selling EVs. And this is the issue and part of the reason why S&P did not include Tesla because they technically were not going to be profitable without the $397 million of regulatory credits. Now, remember I said that they posted a gap profit of $331 million for the quarter. And if you factor in the 331 million with 397 million coming from regulatory credits, that would again potentially mean that if there was zero dollars in regulatory credits, then they would have again had a gap loss of about 60 million. And the only reason they would have a gap loss is because of the stock compensation given to Elon Musk. Now, we have to also keep in mind, the stock compensation that was given to Elon Musk, it was about 290 million it does not come out of Tesla's bank account. It's stock that is issued to him, so they didn't lose 290 million. So there's some gray area where S&P could look at this and say, you know what, they were gap profitable without regulatory credits. They just had to give $290 million worth of stock to Elon Musk, so the business is gap profitable. And then they're also expecting and knowing that next quarter will be even more profitable, so the S&P could approve them on this news. Now, we need to take a look at when the S&P meets again. S&P will meet December 19th. So if we saw the S&P inclusion, 
it would be in the middle of December. That's just something to keep in mind. If that doesn't happen, then it's going to be next quarter for sure. So after next quarter could be the possibility. So we're looking at 2021 S&P inclusion. Don't get too wrapped up in this. So analysts could be upgrading price targets and be putting those out throughout the week, which can further push the stock up once the analyst price targets get adjusted after seeing all this. Total revenue grew 39% year over year in Q3, while reducing the average selling price because of lowering prices in the Model 3, the Y coming out, and then reducing the price in the X. Solar deployed is now at 57, which is 33% year over year growth, but 111% quarter over quarter growth. So we're looking at a massive jump in solar. This is great news. And storage deployed, these are the, the power walls that are deployed into the homes, uh, 759. So we're looking at 59% year over year growth. So this is the beginning of solar starting to grow and pick up. Whole other business, which the energy side can be as big as the automotive side. We see the update in current production sitting at 840,000. Right now, currently, Tesla can produce 840,000. Shanghai has about to have Model Y come online. That's now, next few months, about to come on online, for sure by the beginning of 2021. And that means we will see, for sure, 2021, Tesla will be able to produce over 1 million vehicles for the year of 2021. And in the year 2020, their guidance is to finish producing and delivering 500,000 vehicles for 2020. That's about to wrap up, wrap up. So for 2021, we could see 100% increase in production and possibly close to 1 million vehicles delivered in 2021. If we see those numbers, we are going to see a massive increase in the share price. We continue to see Tesla roll out these $2,000 software updates for the vehicles to get a performance boost. That's on the Model Y. We saw that on the Model 3 previously. So again, these are just going straight to the bottom line. And we have another recap here showing that Tesla's been able to reduce their battery costs and their CapEx costs. We saw that on battery day, 56% decrease in battery packs and 69% decrease for production processes and manufacturing. Absolute game changer. And this is an amazing line right here. Take this in. Enabling production of a profitable $25,000 vehicle. Do you understand this? There is not a single other auto manufacturer right now that could profitably sell a new $25,000 vehicle. Tesla is going to be able to sell their $25,000 vehicle profitably. This is an absolute game changer. We just have to wait and let them get to being able to produce volumes of this. But this is coming, they said, in a few years, three years. We could see this by 2023. Again, we see here the cost of a solar. So right now in the U.S. at $1.49 per watt, this is the lowest cost for solar in the U.S. This is the timing. They're just showing how fast they can get the roof done. This is just in the span of one day. And they're seeing that around one to three days is how long it takes to deploy solar. I listened to the earnings call and they confirmed guidance again, saying they're still striving and aiming for the $500,000 vehicles to deliver. And they said that it is going to be a challenge. See, while achieving this goal has become more difficult, it remains the target. This is great news for the company. Now we're going to look at the Tesla stock price prediction for the near term, the next one to two years. We take a look at current production, we see that Tesla is able to produce 840,000 vehicles per year right now. Shanghai expansion is going to add 200,000 Model Ys a year. So we're looking at the start of 2021 being just over 1 million vehicles being able to produce for the year of 2021. That's what we are assuming right now. If we take a look at Giga Berlin, target production by the end fully ramped is 2 million, going to be Finished in 2021, but then ramping throughout 2021 till 2022 and beyond. We don't know when they'll reach their 2 million vehicles. So I am going to be assuming we are going to be reaching 1 million vehicles produced at Giga Berlin in 2022. Then Giga Texas is even larger. So we are going to be assuming that it is going to be completed at some point in 2021, ramping in 2022 and 2023, seeing potentially 2 million vehicles being produced in the year of 2023, or it might take one extra year in 2024, seeing that. So if we take a look at those numbers, we're looking at a total production 
of 2.89 million vehicles in 2022 in terms of capability. Doesn't mean they're gonna sell all those, but that's the potential. And we're going to see 4.89 million potentially in 2023 for production. Now, Tesla is typically priced for 10 times price to sales for a ratio. If you look, take a look back at my previous videos, you'll see, if you look back on this other side, we see that Microsoft, they are rated at 11 to one in terms of market cap to revenue, meaning their market cap is 11 times greater than their revenue. Microsoft past 12 months revenue, 138 billion, market cap 1.5 trillion. That's where we get the 11 to one ratio. Their margins are 30%. Apple, six to one ratio with a market cap of 1.6 uh, trillion. Now, this is a previous video, so now Apple is at two trillion. We're looking at their sales to market cap being around eight to one now with 38% margins. The market cap to sales ratio is highly dependent on how analysts believe and the market believes the growth, how much growth is to come for the company. So if people believe that Tesla will grow far more than Microsoft or Apple, then they're gonna get a greater market cap to sales ratio. So that's where we see Tesla is gonna be hanging around 10X for now, 10 times the market cap to sales. And we saw that Tesla had about 26 billion in sales last year for 2019. So if we assume 1 million vehicles sold in 2021, we heard on the conference call, Pierre Farragou asked a question and saying that we're looking at you guys being able to produce and deliver anywhere from 800,000 to 1.1 million in 2021. And Elon confirmed, yes, you are not far off. You are probably correct in that ballpark range. So we could see 1 million vehicles delivered in 2021. This is a little optimistic for sure. However, this is a potential. 800,000 will be on the low end for sure though. Average selling price, we're gonna see that drop to 44,000. It's probably gonna be higher than that, to be honest. Average selling price in the previous quarters was around 54,000 per vehicle. So we're really lowballing it because we're seeing a lot of price cuts lately. So we're gonna assume that Tesla's gonna really gonna drive down the costs because they, we see how much savings they're gonna be getting. We're looking at 44 billion in just from automotive in 2021. And what we see is 20% extra revenue comes from solar services and over the software updates, et cetera. If you take a look at Tesla's revenues here, if I just look at Q3, 7.6 billion was from automotive, but they had 8.7 billion in total revenue, which means there's 1.1 billion that's totaling all of the regulatory credits, the solar, the services, the software, et cetera. When you do the math on Q2, 5.1 billion was from automotive, 6 billion total revenue. That's about almost a 20% increase. Then we see 5.1 to 5.9, again, almost a 20% increase. 6.3 to 7.3, almost a 20% increase. So the pattern is there's almost 20% of Tesla's revenue coming from other sources, excluding automotive. This is why we took the ratio here, 20% extra coming from solar and service. However, we could see exponential growth coming from solar and energy. That's why I chose to keep it at 20% to be conservative here. This is how we get an extra 8.8 .8 billion in revenue. We're looking at 54.8 billion in revenue potentially in 2021, which would be nearly a 100% increase in revenue. More likely of about 60 to 70% increase in revenue from 2020 to 2021. If this is achieved and we have a 10X price to sales ratio, we're looking at a $548 billion market cap by the end of 2021. And we're looking at the stock being $587 per share. Now, 2022 is where it gets interesting because so much demand, so much, so much production comes online. And we're seeing potential production of 2.89 million vehicles in 2022. Average selling price, we're assuming it drops more down to 40,000. We're looking at $115 billion in automotive revenue with 23 billion coming from the extras, solar, service, et cetera. $138 billion in revenue could be potential in 2022, which would give a $1.38 trillion market cap if we keep that 10x price to sales ratio. Again, that could come down a little bit. It might not be 10x, it might be 8x, because we people could assume that Tesla's growth would slow a little bit, but at the same time, no, because it's gonna to continue to be exponential because there's a 20 million vehicle target for 2030, which would still plot imply another 8x on the 2.8 million in terms of just vehicles produced and sold. So this brings the share price to, $1,483 by the end of 2022. 
So now you might be first thinking, oh, okay, 587 a share by the end of 2021 isn't a massive increase from here. Well, what can happen is the stock could be higher because people could be pricing in the fact that so much more production is going to be on, online in 2022 and 2023. So analysts will buy ahead of it and that will be already priced in. When I say something's priced in, it means that people are already anticipating these massive spikes in a company growing. So they buy in ahead because they are already planning out the future years. It's just like what I'm doing right here. So if I'm mapping out and I'm seeing, hey, Tesla could produce this many vehicles, potentially sell that many at this number, and they could potentially bring in $138 billion in revenue in 2022, which would give the market cap around 1.38 trillion if we keep that 10X price to sales ratio. Well, you'd say, this is a no brainer. I need to load up on the stock now. So if a bunch of other people do this and they believe Tesla can achieve this, then we can see that the, the share price come up quicker. So instead of seeing 587 by the end of 2021, 2022 and 2023's growth could be priced in at that point, and we can see that share price being higher, anywhere from $600 to $700 a share by the end of 2021. If I was just to give you my opinion, again, this isn't financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. I personally believe that we could see Tesla be about $700 a share by the end of 2021. And then by the end of 2022, I am expecting $1 trillion market cap, a little bit lower than $1,483. I'm expecting about $1,100 a share. So 2021, end of 2021, expecting $700 a share for my own personal opinion. End of 2022, expecting around $1,100 a share. That's going to conclude today's video. 8 p.m., we are seeing 436 for the share price. Now, what I would expect for the next coming days is some analyst price target upgrades, which could actually increment, incrementally push the stock up a little bit higher. Now, I don't have exact near-term prices. I could see the stock being around 460 hitting that throughout this week. I was expecting the stock to be about 500 on the end of the week, potentially. As you see in my previous videos, I was saying that I personally saw Tesla being 460 to 480, upwards of 490 by the end of October, reaching close to the all-time high of the 500. Now, in terms of the end of the year, I am confident that Tesla will be around $500 per share by the end of the year. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciated the analysis. Let me know but down below. Are you holding Tesla shares? Yes or no? And are you looking to buy or sell shares if you, you currently own them? Are you looking to sell? I'm personally not looking to sell. I closed out my Tesla call option only for a $300 USD profit just yesterday when the stock was dipping and it was around $432 a share. And I had my $300 profit. Remember, I bought the call option when the price of the stock was at $419 just about two weeks ago. The strike price I chose was $430 a share expiring at the end of the month. I was seeing negative news out for the overall market. Tesla was selling off into earnings. I wanted to lock in some profits. I'm holding $800,000 to $900,000 worth of Tesla stock. So I wanted to just get rid of the call option because there's no sense being so heavily concentrated in having $800,000 to $900,000 worth of shares and holding a call option. It's too bullish, so I took, the, I took the money off the table, and then my plan was if I saw a sell-off after earnings, then once the sell-off stabilized, I would buy another call option to profit off of the rebound. That was the, the, the thought process behind closing out before earnings came, but now we're just gonna let it ride, and just let this ride out. So I'm going to continue to hold Tesla. Thanks for watching again. Subscribe for more videos just like this one, more stock portfolio updates, and I'll see you in the next video.